Good morning, friends. It is great to be with you this day, and I praise God for the gift of the day, for all the blessings that await us and the opportunities that we have to make Christ known in the lives we encounter this day. So if you got your Bible with you this morning, we're going to continue our journey through 1 Corinthians. We're in the seventh chapter. We're going to be picking up at verse 25. And, and thus far, this chapter has focused on the element of, of sexual relations. And one of the things that we recognize is that in the Corinthian society, uh, sexual immorality was, was something that was absolutely rampant. And seemingly as a counter to that, the church has written a letter to Paul and they are proposing ideas of uh, potentially breaking off relationships, abstaining from all kind of, kinds of, of activity, even that that's bound inside the marriage, because somehow this is going to make them better in the eyes of God or more acceptable. Or, and we've, we've dispelled that. We, we've dug into Paul's teaching where he makes it very clear. It's like, hey, for some it is to marry and that's the gift. And for some it is to be single and that's the gift. And God can use the gifts in each one for his purpose. Paul's going to continue that journey as we dig into our next section. And so let's just pick up into the scripture and, and unpack this a little bit more. Verse 25 it says, now about virgins, I have no command from the Lord, but I give a judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you pledged to a woman? Do not seek to be released. Are you free from such a commitment? Do not look for a wife. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. But those who marry will face many troubles in this life, and I want to spare you this. So what is Paul saying again? He's saying, I, I want you to stay as you are. I don't want you jumping and saying, well, it's better to be married. That'll make the Lord more, more pleased. Or it's better to be unmarried. That'll make the Lord more pleased. And, and Paul's just encouraging, stay as you are. Don't, don't go looking for it. He's saying, if it, if it shows up, don't avoid it. Don't, you know, don't hide from it. If that's where, where your life is, is leading you to be united in marriage, then embrace that and then see how you may serve the Lord your God with, with all that you have. But it's okay to be just as you are. There is no sp greener spiritual grass by moving into a different relationship status. And so Paul just encourages that again in a different way. He encourages it more from the perspective of, of being a virgin than from being married. So uh, in 29, when he talks about, uh, when, when he kind of unpacks this a little bit, is what I mean, brothers and sisters, is that, for a sh for, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not, and those who mourn as if they did not, and those who are happy as if they were not, and those who buy something as if it was not theirs to keep, and those who use the things of this world as if not engrossed in them, for this world in its present form is passing away. Now, th that opens up with a section of what I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short, and from now on, those who have wives should live as if they don't. Wow, I mean, that, that's overwhelming. But even th these, other, these other images that Paul is talking about, to those who mourn should live as if they did not. Those who are happy should live as if they weren't. What is Paul saying? He's trying to, to reveal to us the temporary nature of this world. In other words, don't sink your whole life or, or, or engross your whole life in the things of this world and thinking that, that, that this is what it is. This is what it is for all time. This is all I have to deal with and, and, and to immerse yourself in this. In other words, Paul's trying to say in kind of a, uh, a sideways approach or a backwards approach is how I might say it is don't become so invested in the, the things and the feelings and, and the activities of this world that you forget this is but a speck in time and your, your relationship with God, it, it's eternal. It's in this world and the world to come and, and to live for his kingdom, to, to live with that is the central priority in your life. It's not saying ignore your wife. It's not saying, you know, just pretend like you're not mourning or pretend like, but just remember that this, and it closes that, for this world in its present form is passing away. Don't anchor yourself in those things, in, in the, the thoughts and the feelings and the experiences of this world, and think that they are what is most important. So Paul goes on, uh, verse 32, I would like you to be free from concern, 
An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affair. How can he please the Lord? But a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world. How can he please his wife? And his interests are divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world, how she can please her husband. I am saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. So it sounds like Paul is saying, you know, hey, it's better to be unmarried. But he's not. All he's lifting up here is he's saying, you need to be aware of the situation that you are in. If you're unmarried, you have the opportunity to be wholly devoted to the Lord with no, you know, no split focus. If you are married, there is that element of, of devotion to your, your husband or devotion to your wife. And Paul's not trying to, to cut that down. He's try, not trying to minimize that. He's not trying to say that this is bad in any way. He's saying, I am saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. He's saying, if you're married, keep it in perspective that the first thing in your life, the number one priority in your life is the Lord your God. And sometimes in this world, we, we as Christians are tempted to say, you know, okay, you know, I mean, I'm not married, you know that. Um, my spouse comes first, before all else, not before the Lord. My relationship with Lord, the Lord has to be primary. And if it's not primary, I've got a problem. I've got a problem with my priorities, but I also have a problem in my marriage relationship in the sense that the Lord and the Lord alone is the one who gives me strength to be the man that I need to be for my wife. And when we think about that, if we have those relationships reverse, then, you know, if, if our spouse is first and the Lord is second, then we put all our energies toward our spouse and our focus toward our spouse. And then when we come up against challenges, the Lord becomes our rescue plan. The Lord should be our strength in every moment. And so Paul's just trying to unpack this and say, you know, I don't, if you're single, I don't want you to get, I don't necessarily want you to get married. If you're married, I don't want you to be single. S you know, stop making up all these arbitrary things in the Corinthian church that you think somehow addresses the morality issue in society. But then he goes on and he encourages and he says, you know, if you're single, this is your situation. If you're married, this is your situation. But be aware, this time is short. You need to keep the Lord at the center of your life. So that's his message to us today. That's Paul's message to us. Keep the Lord at the center of it all. Make him the, the primary focus and our lives will be grounded and anchored in the way that God intended. So friends, there's, there's a little bit more in chapter seven here. Uh, I thought about trying to complete it today, but I think th this is a lot just to digest already. So um, let's have a word of prayer before we go. Gracious God, I thank you and praise you for your word. Lord, for the way that, that you bring forth the challenge to us, how you've spoken through Paul. Um, Lord, when I, I think of Corinth and I think about uh, our society here in the U.S. and in other regions of the world, where through the, the, the constant influence of TV and of movies and uh, all of the different influences that are poured in our life, Lord, we... we face a society that in a lot of ways is like Corinth. And we pray for the wisdom to be faithful Christians, to be a faithful church in this present day. Lord, let us live in a way that honors you above all else, Lord. Help us, by your Holy Spirit, lead us to place you as first in our life, always and everywhere. We pray in your holy name. Amen. All right, friends, it's been great being with you today. Look forward to being back together tomorrow. I uh, pray you know God loves you, and so do I.